Hey, what's up guys? Uh, this is an unboxing of the Zen 103 Classic 12. This finally came in. Pre-ordered this as soon as it pretty much was announced a couple, was a couple months ago. Seems like that. I can't remember when it was. Uh, I don't know if I was immediate, but uh, you know, this thing basically sold out. Uh, I wouldn't say within hours, but maybe within days pretty quick um this is pretty popular and this being a 60th anniversary edition um there's some uh, special i guess anniversary upgrades or features uh you know it's uh just went really hot and it's only limited to 600 pieces so anyways uh it's not a review just a quick unboxing well actually i've done the unboxing I'll save uh, some of the uh, suspense here. It's not a big deal. Just opening up a box. But um, I'll quickly show you what it comes with. This is actually something else on the side. But basically it comes in this black box. I guess it's leatherette. Um, it's bigger than your standard Zen box. Which is basically just a square. This is wider. And uh, inside there's warranty card. And this little instruction booklet well not little <laughs> but it's got some uh, information how to size the bracelet how to set the time you know your basic stuff uh you know watches you'll probably know all this stuff already some information about the company and this watch and stuff so that's that and so you get this inside when you open it the watch would be right here and wrapped up nicely in plastic and all that with a barcode, you know, and so we'll just get a closer look at this beauty. And yeah, um, some of you know from watching my channel and uh, other social media post postings, uh, I had a Zen before, actually two. Uh, it was a 104 I, it's uh, indexes, not the Arabic numerals. And I had a white dial version, actually had two of them. First time I got it on the fine mesh bracelet, and then not fine mesh, fine link bracelet, bracelet, sorry, and then that one wasn't running that great. It's actually, I think it was running like slow by about. To me, it was when I was timing it. I think it was around twenty seconds, um, but supposedly that was within their range of tolerance. Uh, and the way the case, it's a different case back than this, but the way that they had it. There's these three these holes in it, and they're very. You need a special tool to get to it, so I couldn't regulate it myself. And not actually many people. I went to a lot of watchmakers; they didn't even have a tool to use to go with it. To it, it's a very specialized tool, so you'd probably have to take it to someone that services in, which would be in the United States, RGM, which I believe are in Pennsylvania. And um, yeah, I didn't want to deal with that, so I sold it and I bought another one, and that one was better regulated to. About six seconds, plus six seconds, which is a lot better than what it was. But I got that one on an H-Link bracelet. And I love that watch. Um, I would have kept it if I could. But it was a situation where I felt like I had to pick and choose a particular white dial watch that I had. Or maybe a couple that I had, were, uh, had at the time. And so I ended up selling it. I figured if I wanted to, it'd be worth buying again later. Haven't gotten to that, but um, anyways, fast forward to now, or maybe a couple months ago when this was announced, um, I was like, wow, this is a good looking watch, limited. And yeah, FOMO, if you're missing out as a bitch, <laughs> it's real. And so I figured, you know what, just, just go for it. You have an opportunity to pick one up, just do it. I don't like it and why I don't know why I wouldn't um, this would not be hard to sell I'm sure uh, I'd at least get my money back if not probably make a little bit off of it since they've all but sold out and only limited to 600 uh, being a 60th anniversary piece uh, I believe it's the first time they used a ceramic bezel um, not sure if they've done this style in the 12 hour before I don't think so. I think it was a timing bezel before. And this is a bi-directional 12, you know, bi-directional uh, 
12 hour bezel for keeping a second time zone. Um, screw down pushers, screw down crown, 200 meters water resistance. Go through specs 41 millimeters. So it's basically the same. I think overall from this side, it's basically this angle. It's basically the same dimensions as a one or four more or less. Uh, but the difference is the thickness. And because this is an automatic movement, generally they're thicker. And this from top to bottom, I didn't measure it, but if I recall, it's right about 17 millimeters. Yeah, well, that's including the crystal. It's pretty domed. And this uh, it has a really nice display case back. And it's nice and big. Get a nice look at that movement. And uh, what else? I think this is the first time they've done applied indices as well. Um, this has a special, I think they said, electroplated black dial. So it's basically got a nice deep kind of shine or gloss to it, but it's also got a, a radiant uh, quality to it as well. Uh, not sure, it's probably this lighting and right now. It's not really showing up, but there is some bit of like a radiant kind of effect going on. Uh, it's very subtle, but it's there. And they say that the dial, the subdials, and like the how the loom is filled, and the colors on the bezel is not really white. It's actually kind of off white, what they call chamois, or <laughs> it looks like it's pronounced chamois, but uh, it's you know like chamois, like the chamois cloth that you use to dry your car, like if you're washing it. Um, yeah. It's kind of like that, that kind of, uh, it's not as warm color, I would say, as an astral chamois, but that's, that's what they call this color. And I like the fact that it's not a stark white, um, contrast, like my 104 was, the white dial. It's like a really stark, bright white and against black, uh, as, you know, as, uh, contrasting colors. And this contrast, but not as... I guess harshly, if you want to, this is even harsh, but it's, it's toned down because it's not a bright white. And uh, yeah, and I think they cleverly or nicely subtly put a date window right there. It's pretty well placed right at the, I guess, 430. Low profile, I guess, matches the dial. And I don't think it ruins the symmetry really. Um, would it be better if it had it, didn't have it? I guess, but. I, I can appreciate the practicality of having um, a date on a, on a watch. And the way this is done, everything else is more prominent and that's very subtle. So that just kind of disappears in the background. And it comes with the, the humidifying uh, or DV humidifying capsule. So this turns, this gives an indicator. So it should be white, but as soon as it gets more moisture, over time, if it turns like a pretty solid blue, then you definitely want to change that out and get it serviced. And from what I can tell, I know it doesn't say it on the dial, but when I was reading the manual, the book there, it should have the AR or argon gas technology in here. So there's, there's actually should be argon gas in here as well, which helps to, uh, you know, keep things nice and clean and dehumidified and and that basically helps all the parts run better too and increases service interval times so it's longer in between so it'll run more accurately and better longer for, for a longer period of time and uh yeah and uh i guess i can try to show this on wrist real quickly this comes with the this lighting might not show it that well and it is pretty dark but this is like a dark green like a dark army green, almost a uh, uh, leather strap. Pretty, pretty nice. And uh, oh, the lug width is 20 millimeters, in case you're wondering. And it comes with also, um, let's see, some of this extra spring bars, it looks like, and uh, a tool, and this other, um, it's like a black, with I think like white, or maybe it's chamois. <laughs> It's some kind of contrast stitching. It's it's basically leather with like a crocodile or the alligator uh, textured grain on on there, so that you get that too. And uh, that's it. And uh, let me just see if I can show you this on wrist. So 
being an automatic chronograph, it's going to, again, have some pretty decent wrist presence in terms of uh, its thickness. There's usually very little ways around that, especially, I believe this is essentially a Valjuz base, like 7750 type of movement, if I'm not mistaken. And those are generally pretty thick, which makes it pretty amazing that you think about what they can fit into a Rolex Daytona. That thing is incredibly compact and slim for an automatic chronograph. And so uh, you got to give them props on that, but I don't mind. I mean, this is a pilot watch. So, um, and a tool watch and it should have some decent presence. And my wrist is just under seven inches and um, above six and three quarters. I'll tell you that somewhere right in the middle. It might have gotten a little bit bigger recently, but it's still, I should be at seven or just under. And uh, do I have another hole? I might have, yeah, one. I think I have one more hole there. I could tighten it up. Depends on how swollen my wrists are, but there you go. Let me kind of back it up. And it's not bad. The look to look, I don't remember what it is, but it's relatively short. And the lugs do angle down. And just the way it is, you're going to have, it's not going to be completely flat against the wrist. Like the lugs won't be like, like this, unless maybe I uh, tighten it down a little bit more. It is on the looser side. So you have only so many holes, and I believe I can use up to the last one, and it just fits. So let me just show you that. So that might... Come on, focus. That might carry on a little bit better. But, you know, it doesn't go overhang off of the outside of my wrist sides. You know, it's not like plateauing out. So I think it's fine. I mean, this type of watch, you're going to have to go with its, its dimensions and just kind of accept the fact that, you know, it's going to have wrist presence and it's going to sit a certain way. And I don't mind. I think it's still, it's comfortable. Nothing digs into the back of my hand. And it's actually not all that heavy considering kind of the size of the watch too. I mean, if you look at the profile like this, let me back it up. It's not, let me get the contrast with the background a little bit. You can see it a little bit better. Overall, it's actually not that bad off of the wrist. It's not like, like, like super high. I mean, generally, a lot of the watches I wear, probably a lot of people too, I think the average thickness, probably around 13 millimeters. So uh, an extra four millimeters, sure. But it's not like it's double the thickness, like 20 26 millimeters thick or something. No, no, it's not that massive. And there are some watches that are crazy massive like that. Um, but I'm trying to give some perspective here. You know, it's like, it's not like unsightly and like totally like, oh man, just like a dish on your wrist. No, oh, I think it works fine. You know, I think I have to get used to the visual size of this as well, because a lot of my watches these days have been, I think I got some 41s and less, but uh, the thickness, yeah, this is definitely the thickest in a while. I think my Hamilton, the Intramatic Automatic, is, it's not as thick, but in some ways it, it might show its weight a little bit more, because uh, this is at least the mid case is kind of, divide it it's like right there so up here is thinner but i believe the hamilton is more not exactly slab sided but it goes straight up and down to the bottom a bit more so there's more on the side uh, so it makes it look actually maybe a little bit thicker and those lugs tend to hang out or quite long too and they don't angle as much it's not a they might be close to that, but they definitely are longer lows than that Hamilton Intramatic. Uh, look back at my videos. I had a, I used to own that watch. It was a reverse panda, a blue dial, with an off-white. That was a lovely watch. Very well built, too. 
and I do miss that. But um, yeah, I've been wanting a, a Zin back in the collection for a while. And I thought I'd wait until I get another 104, either the white, the white one that I had before. I really like that color, it looks really good. Or I do like the black version with the Arabic numerals. Um, that looks really good to me. It would, those are basically Thai. I was going back and forth on those for a while, but ultimately I decided on the white. But if I were to rebuy it again, I was thinking, well, I would maybe I should try the black one. And lo and behold, this kind of came up and I said, well, you know what? Why don't this be the next Zen that I get? Um, automatic chronograph, limited edition. Beautiful, classic, uh, sort of historically important, um, and it's black this time. Still got it's got indexes, and it still has some white, white subdials or off white, I guess. They're actually a little bit silver or metallic if you actually see it in uh, certain lighting. But I think overall, you know, it's one of those types of silver if it, if it is that carries off as basically. You know, some sort of white color. And see if you can listen to... Oh, I'll start off the chronograph just to show it to you. And it runs pretty smooth. The only thing about these, I like the fact that this keeps, you know, helps with the water resistance so you don't accidentally do something stupid and push it while it's submerged or even having some bit of running water over it but see it starts off pretty smooth there's no like jump it's nice and let's see i think this will just I'll give it like about a minute just to see how that turns but i'm pretty i guess once it hits to the top it'll click over it's not like some chronographs where it's slow that Minute counter is slowly moving along with the second hand, which is kind of nice when it does that. I think the Seiko automatic chronograph that they have out right now, there's also a limited edition. Some was a stick, it's around 16 or so, I think, at least 15, around 16 maybe. Uh, they have like a reverse, uh, they have a panda, it's really nice. Um, column wheel chronograph. I think it's using an NE88 or something like that, or some sort of Seiko equivalent. And uh, I'll see here, just to show you. There we go. And then we'll stop it. And, oops, I'm not going to unscrew this. And there we go. I like these. It's kind of like what's on a new Daytona's, I suppose, the more modern ones. They all have these kind of screw down pushers. Um, but the slight downside to them, I would say, is that uh, because you have to unscrew and screw them uh, to use them, or at least to use them, maybe you want to leave them up, but I wouldn't do that. It's just that extra, uh, <laughs> extra action that you have to do to unlock it basically uh, it's not like such a spontaneous uh use of your chronograph you know what i mean like if it didn't have that you could just start it and stop it and go without having to fiddle with these first and then have it okay now i can do it you know but that's it's a fair trade-off i think just to ensure that you know this is not going to get accidentally pushed by when you're anywhere near some a bit of water that you might be concerned about. Don't know how the loom is. Assume it's the same as probably my 104. It's actually pretty decent. Uh, it does last throughout the night. It's not the, the strongest or brightest, but uh, it's definitely still legible throughout the night. It gets a good charge before you, you know, retire for the night. And uh, if you want to read in the dark. It's there's it's there enough to to read it for, for fairly easily, so I'll tell you that, and I'm pretty sure it'll be the same. But I'll test it out, and I'll let you guys know. Oh, so I'm gonna take this off. So what's in the other box here? Well, I'm a bracelet guy, and I also, you know, at least when I'm going to work, and I will wear this to work. 
because I'm not going to baby this. Because this I buy my watches to wear. I don't care if it's limited edition or not. Collectible. Hey, I think this is still holding its value. And, um, and uh, wouldn't be hard to sell if I wanted to. I usually take very good care of my watches. So I'm not too worried about it. And anyways, this is meant to be enjoyed. As such, again, I like to wash my watches when I come back from work, just to make sure it's free of any contaminants. And this is definitely has water resistant to take it. This is in robust, right? But I'm not going to be wearing it on the leather. Um, try to preserve this. It's kind of the original strap. I mean, I will wear it from time to time, mainly on my days off, or uh, you know, I, I don't have to worry about having to clean this stuff off because you know you can't really wash this <laughs> but um i got the uh matching 103 bracelet mainly the thing that matches it would be the the end links um i'm not sure how it differs in 104 but i guess there is they do make one for 104 obviously and maybe they're slightly different so it came in this box uh it's the first time i order it like this separately there's a couple of spring bars here's the uh the solid end links and then comes with the tool and get how it is exactly on the ends here we have the push pin kind of thing here which I'm not sure if you're gonna need that on this it doesn't have like you know some of those some watches especially some some chronographs like my Hamilton has like a button to advance like say the date or maybe someone's had other features and here's the screwdriver end um, that will be needed for it's pretty solid that will be needed for the uh, each link bracelet here this has got screw I see it's got hex screws huh then what the heck are they giving me oh yeah here it is Here's the tools and the hex screws, uh, Allen wrenches rather, or hex wrench, whatever we call it. Um, you need two of them because you kind of have to hold both sides and kind of counter twist. They sort of lock from both ends, but um, it's just the way it works. This, what the heck is the screwdriver for? Well, anyways, I'm not going to worry about that. I wonder if this is actually, do they always say Frankfurt? I might be butchering this. Is it Am Main or is it Am? That's, that doesn't sound right. That sounds very American. Frankfurt Am Main. No, it's probably <laughs> Frankfurt Am um, Main. Main. <laughs> I don't know. Tell me how you pronounce it. But uh, I mean, this is on the dial too, which is, I think, another special feature. Not you know, it's not just a Zin it has the where it's manufactured, I guess, too. Or at least it's a. Uh, is that the corporate headquarters? Something like that. It's in the book. <laughs> and uh, maybe they're all like this. I forgot what my 104 came with. It probably is. So, yeah, I'm going <clears> to <throat> get this sized up, put on this, and I think this will look pretty darn sweet with it. And in some ways, it may actually kind of balance out the watch, even though. I mean, yeah, it is. A, it's not like super top heavy, but you know, come on, there is a little bit of weight compared. To, you know, you're gonna feel it more on the strap like this versus this. We'll probably you know, even it out a bit more. And again, I like bracelets, so we're gonna work on that. Is there anything else? Oh, the bezel action. I told you it was 12, uh, 12 clicks. Come on. I don't know if you can hear it. Very smooth. And it just locks, falls right into place. It's just clicking. Those, you feel that ball bearing set. So it's definitely for a 12 hour bezel. I was kind of hoping that it would be um, maybe even 60 click or something where you can maybe set it more freely just instead of just on the hour like if you wanted to use it as a 12 hour counter 
Like, but, but then you know what, actually, if you're going to be timing, you basically have that 12 hour counter right there in the sub dial, huh? So yeah, you guess you don't need it. You can use this as a second time zone. Um, I don't actually need to track the second time zone, but if and when I do travel or if I t think I need to think about another place, um, keep it in mind or time, then I have that option right here. And so, yeah, you'll probably be seeing more of this on some of the videos that I put out. Watch you strap in. This can be a bit of a strap monster, although, you know, this looks will look great overall from most angles on a NATO 2. But my concern is the thickness and getting that extra layer under here. Even a single pass might be pushing it up off the wrist just a bit. I mean, I'll give it a try, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to really look the best. At least from you look too far down the side of the wrist where you can really see it up. But from other most other angles where that's not really going to be seen or noticed that much, then I think it look pretty good on certain NATOs and colors. Uh, otherwise, I have two piece things that will that will work pretty well with this as well. And so I'll leave it at that. This was just supposed to be a quick unboxing, but I guess I kind of fooled you. I did unbox it, but you know, come on. At least you wanted to get to the nitty gritty of what's in here. Um, so yeah, I feel fortunate I was able to snag one of these. Um, we'll be enjoying this for a while. And so, uh, yeah, I'll catch you the next one. So have a good one. Thanks. Bye.